Well, hello there, you beautiful, beautiful people. It's Saturday. That's it. It's the weekend. And this is a special weekend video just for you because you're amazing. So look, let's get straight into the meat and potatoes as we discuss the complete and utter predictability of the true crime niche. And it's quite sad in the grander scheme of things to see how easy it is for people to sort of throw away their belief in the structure that needs to be in place with regards to convicting someone. And what I mean is, look, Brian Koberger could indeed be guilty. In fact, pretty much from the start, my stance on this has always been that Brian Koberger was involved in the Idaho 4 case, but something that I always struggled with was whether Brian Koberger did this on his own. Was he part of something bigger? Was there something else larger going on? And look, you only have to look around this crime and the people within it to understand that there is a potential for there to be external influences that could have spurned on this crime. We don't have to go far away from the victims to see that there was family members, parents even, and who had got themselves caught up in narcotics and such. And look, this isn't about victim blaming, this isn't about doing anything to say that there's justification in what happened this is merely just stating facts and that is that sadly some that lost their lives on this night they had connections through family that got them entwined in a nefarious world and look we won't mention specific names because if you've been here long enough you know who we're referencing when we talk about that but also, there have been other things that have happened around this crime, such as the fact that there was a drug bust, an Idaho drug bust, and, you know, this huge, huge, nearly million-dollar fentanyl bust that was one of the, if not the largest, narcotics bust in, the, in their history, and it happens around the time of this crime. And look... Could be a coincidence, of course it could. Could be a complete and utter coincidence. There have also been other strange things that have happened. When you look at the Demetrius and Emma situation, with regards to the fact that it would appear from the outset that they had been involved in the distribution supply of narcotics to an individual who'd lost their life. And <laughs> all of a sudden, they are seemingly having their charges drop down to what would, in effect, be a misdemeanor and walk free. You've had numerous situations like this that have happened where you would expect there to be bigger repercussions but people are just walking away. They're walking away from things that they've done. You've also got situations where there's been people who interacted with the victims on the night in question and were involved in conversations that would lead you to think, that's a strange thing to say. You know, this... Yeah, they're going to get you for this. We've touched on this multiple, multiple times. So I'm not going to go into in depth in that because we're just covering old ground. But let's not forget that the likes of Jack Showalter very quickly left this area. I believe he went over to Kenya and never, ever returned. Even the surviving roommates, we've heard that they have subsequently left this area never to return. They're not interacting with people that they would once interact with and look we don't know if that's 100 percent factual but it would certainly appear to be the case they're not coming forward they're not speaking they're not having any conversations with anyone the last we rarely heard of them was that they had themselves obtained legal representation there are mixed feelings about that but ultimately that's where that left and we also have a situation in the the court proceedings themselves whereby Brian Koberger would be heading towards a preliminary hearing that would go in a specific way to get everything out on the table and for there to be a decision made whether there was enough evidence to convict or at least go into the, the proceedings and what happens all of a sudden when 
Bethany Funk is called as a potential material witness that could provide exculpatory evidence, we have a grand jury step in and take the preliminary hearing that would have potentially have all this then brought out, taken off the table. And, you know, these are all quite strange situations to happen in a case of this nature. We've also seen numerous situations where things have been requested by the defence and the prosecution have been quite reluctant to hand them over. And we've also seen sort of larger media outlets such as Court TV and News Nations pushing hard an online agenda to it would appear, convict Brian Koberger before he's actually gone into the courtroom. And then we get to where we are now, and that is yesterday, with the release, or the day before yesterday, the release of Brian Koberger's alibi. Now, let's make no bones about it. Brian Koberger was in a situation where he was in a state where that state had a demand set in place that he was to provide them with an alibi. And that is as simple as that. They were in a situation where they were being asked to give something, to present something, and they were offered a deadline with which to do so. So they gave what they were asked for. They gave an alibi. The issue came with people's expectations of what their interpretation of alibi was. And it's very, very clear that the vast majority of people that you look in comments, they expected something completely different. Now, I don't know what they were waiting for, considering the time that we are talking about with respect of when this crime took place. Now, I would challenge the vast majority of you to tell me what you were doing at 4am on the night that this crime took place. What were you doing? Who were you with? And say you had been arrested and subsequently charged, are you telling me that every single one of you would have been able to give an alibi to your own standards that you are holding as to what you think an alibi should look like? Court TV's video a few hours ago was completely and utterly disgusting. Completely and utterly disgusting. And is it shows the flaws in our media and the way with which they push certain things and force specific agendas to make a joke of this situation, to make a joke of the alibi as if this is saying, look, well, he clearly done it. He obviously did it. This wasn't a, an alibi. This was a confession. This was someone who was confessing to the crime without confessing to the crime. And you look at how that then per perpetuates attacks and, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. Because at the end of the day, look, Brian Koberger could be guilty. Of course he could. He could just be a monster and he's done this crime. But there are questions surrounding that. We don't have really any motive. We hear him the defence saying that there's absolutely no connection between Brian Coburg and the victims. We know that there was no DNA found in his car, not in any of the properties with which he would then go on to, his or, you know, or his parents. But all of these little things are getting blown up into such huge proportion and then weaponized to force the notion that he is, beyond reasonable doubt, guilty. And when you strip them back and you look at them, like the fact that he was apparently segregating rubbish in the early hours of the morning when he was arrested, he had gloves on, so on and so forth. It's been stated that Brian Cobra was potentially a germaphobe. We've got numerous neighbours that said that he was a night owl. He would be doing stuff at night. He wasn't someone who would go to bed at 8 o'clock of an evening and wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning having 12 hours of beauty sleep. This wasn't who Brian was. And I've spoken to multiple, numerous people who would talk about, you know, their life. And if they were on their own and living a life of sort of solitude and loneliness, that they would frequent going out in their car and driving into the night. And I know people who do this. You know, I know people who do this themselves. Doesn't Having these quirks don't make you a killer. 
doesn't, again, this isn't about saying that Brian Koberg is innocent. What I'm saying is that the stuff that's trying to be pushed across to say that he is guilty is not so. This is just bullshit that's being weaponized. And again, I didn't expect there to be any other form of alibi. And in, in effect, Brian Koberger could have said many, many other things. He could have said many, many other things that would have raised even more alarms. It just seemed like a truthful, you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say that I was out driving. I was in my car. I was driving around in my car. And you've got to think to yourself what got him in this position right now. And that is that there was a conversation. I touched on this in the last video or the one before that. And it was that Brian Cobra had gone in to law enforcement to have an interview. He had spoken to them and he had done that without legal representation. And then something happened and it was abruptly halted. And then he obtained legal representation. And I believe, and I stated this, that it was within that 15 minutes of having a discussion that Brian placed himself in a position that enabled him to be seen as a potential perpetrator. And let's not forget that many things after this all happened things had been changed and what i mean by after this after brian koberger had been placed in the crosshairs things started to change and it seems that things had started to change in order to fit the narrative that would eventually be put out as to what happened we look at what the coroner had said right at the beginning what the coroner said in terms of time of death placed the times of death much earlier and then that was shifted forward and now we have this really, really small window of opportunity when these crimes were committed. We also have the car where the details of the car were changed. And again, these all seemingly were done at a time when Brian Cobo would have been being investigated in the background. And they needed to make him fit. And look... This isn't about conspiracy. This is just about saying it as it is. The fact that things had been changed, even up to Dylan Mortensen and the things that she had said on that fateful night, even that had been adapted and changed in terms of what she said she saw, what she said she heard, and her, her reactions to that. But this ain't over. This isn't over. And I wish that people could just continue having an open mind and understand that the release of this alibi did nothing to change anything. All it did was give people another piece of information to weaponize to force their agenda. Does that make sense? But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about how the the alibi coming out has been handled by the likes of court tv and such have they done any favors or are they just proven that when it comes to your constitutional rights as u.s citizens that these people just simply do not care this is just about forcing a narrative and saying the things that are going to follow the larger driven narrative to earn more money and gain them more, I don't know, more popularity amongst those same minded people. Have a fantastic weekend, and I will catch you all in the next one.